If you have ever struggled to get Wi-Fi reception, you might find it hard to believe that Wi-Fi can actually travel over a mile. In fact, with the right antenna, it can make a huge difference to the range Wi-Fi can achieve. And today, we're gonna try out a tool I wrote to find the maximum distance we can receive with a particular antenna. So, stick around. Wi-Fi is an incredible technology, and it's capable of some pretty extreme ranges as well. But you might not believe that if you're just a couple of rooms away from your router, struggling to connect, and can't seem to get a signal. Well, usually the problem with that isn't that Wi-Fi doesn't have good range, it's that your manufacturer of the router didn't know exactly where you're gonna put it. So instead of including a directional antenna like this excellent Yagi, they included an omnidirectional, which assumes that you could be anywhere and spreads out the signal kind of like a lamp where it's lighting a general area without focusing in in particular in any one place. Now, if you do know exactly where you want that energy to go, you can use this Yagi antenna, or maybe something even more extreme like a parabolic grid, to focus the energy in and make all of it go in one direction, which gives you great range at the expense of, well, pretty much everything else, because anything to the left or the right is going to get pretty terrible signal. Now, if we were to also go up to the top of a peak that has line of sight, we could get some really extreme range with this, but it would also be really hard to know exactly how far we were getting unless we knew the exact location of the individual networks we were seeing. Well, today I wrote a tool that does just that, and we're going to go up and see exactly how far we can see with this directional antenna and an omnidirectional antenna to determine the actual range of Wi-Fi when we use line of sight. In order to measure the difference between different types of network antennas, we're going to need to solve a couple problems first. Now, the first tool we'll be using is Wireshark, and Wireshark is great for simply plugging in the antenna and recording all the different networks we can see. But in the beginning, we have absolutely no idea where all of these networks are located. So we can see the networks, but we don't know where they are yet. Now, fortunately, there is a service that can help us here, and the Wiggle Wi-Fi API is able to take the MAC address of the network, or any network we can see, and translate it into a longitude and latitude, as we can see here. Now, what this means is some uh, ingenuitive war driver has previously added this to a database that includes information about where this network actually is. So if we know where we are and we know where this network is, then we can measure the distance between us and figure out exactly what the range of the antenna we're dealing with is. So my idea was to write a script for this so we can really quickly take a whole bunch of results we've gotten from Wireshark and translate them into plots on a map and then find the furthest one so we can determine which one of these antennas has the best range, as well as what kind of radiation pattern we're dealing with by looking at the map to see what kinds of networks we can see and where they're located geographically from our observation point. Now to do this, we'll also need to take a look at the code, which is not too complicated, but as you can see in this example, in about 37 lines of code, I've written something that will basically take any network we see in Wireshark and query Wiggle Wi-Fi really quickly, take the results, and plot it to a folium map, which is a great way of visualizing information and an easy way for us to start looking at different patterns of what we can see based on our observation point. Now to make this work, I had to use Pygl, which is a really interesting tool that allows me to query Wiggle Wi-Fi automatically, although in order to make this work, I had to sign up for Wiggle Wi-Fi and use my API key in order to access the data automatically. Now there are some rate limiting uh, things to know about, which means that if you are hitting this API too quickly, too many times, then you will eventually get locked out for the day, but you will be able to query the next day, and if you reach out to the Wiggle Wi-Fi people, they're often very nice about raising your rate provided they know what you are doing with those API calls. Now, let's put this tool to the test by visualizing some results we can expect in advance. In particular, let's see if we can see the difference between a directional and omnidirectional antenna when we plot the different networks we can see with each. Now, what we should expect to see is that the directional should have a much further range, but only like a flashlight in a particular direction, whereas the omnidirectional will have a reduced range but have better general coverage. So, let's head out. In order for our test to work, the first thing we need to do is find some good line of sight. And that means finding a high up location where we can see preferably for miles in every direction. 
Now, I found a spot up by the Hollywood sign and managed to use this to test our first antenna, which was a omnidirectional. Now, after installing the omnidirectional and starting to scan for a while, I was able to record a good amount of signals by just holding it up and using this regular antenna, and I was impressed to see the amount of results I got in Wireshark. After I exported the data and cleaned it up a little bit, I loaded it into my tool, and I was able to generate the following map, which shows a pretty interesting pattern. Now, as we can see here, we got a pretty uniform shape with our omnidirectional antenna, and the only obstruction we had was from the actual Hollywood Hills on either side, preventing us from seeing in these two directions. Otherwise, we were able to see at roughly the same distance of about, after checking the final distance, 3.25 miles, which is really impressive for an omnidirectional antenna, and obviously not the kind of performance you would expect to see indoors when you have a bunch of walls in the way, but still a really impressive demonstration of an omnidirectional antenna when you do have line of sight. Next, to test out the difference between the directional and omnidirectional antenna, I attached the Yagi antenna and pointed it directly at downtown LA. Now I could probably see a whole bunch of networks if I were to sweep it back and forth, but by keeping it in one direction, I should be able to see whether this antenna is highly directional and sees networks in a straight line, or if it's more omnidirectional and able to see things that the omnidirectional was able to see as well. Now when I open up the map, I'm able to see that it does look like pretty much a straight line, and it wasn't even able to see some of the closer networks that the omnidirectional was able to see. Meaning if we're pointing it in one direction, then it's pretty limited from side to side, although the maximum distance we were able to see was substantially further at 5.34 miles, getting pretty close to downtown LA. After getting such a great distance with the Yagi antenna, I wanted to really push it and see what the maximum amount of networks I could see from that vantage point was. By sweeping it from side to side, from the Hollywood side all the way up to the San Fernando Valley, I was able to see around the mountains an incredible distance. Now, after generating the map, I could see that the furthest distance I was able to get was actually over by our friends at Null Space Labs by the Burbank Airport, at over 5.13 miles away. Now, this goes to show that if you have a good line of sight, an omnidirectional versus directional antenna really does make a big difference. And if you're pointing in a particular direction, then the Yaki antenna can really extend out to over 5 miles. All right, after comparing the results directly, it's pretty obvious that the right antenna makes a huge difference. Our first results of the omnidirectional showed a good overall coverage, but pretty poor range. And then the next result we got was of fantastic range, but only in one direction. Now, when we tried to just do everything and moved our antenna all the way around, we got dramatic range, but in no particular direction. And we wouldn't expect to see this without actively moving our antenna all the way around. Meaning that although we get incredible range with the Yagi, it is limited in one direction, and we wouldn't be able to see something like this if we didn't have it constantly moving. Now, if you wanted to map your own Wi-Fi range, you could do so with my tool and find out exactly how far your antenna can see from whatever particular line of sight you're looking for, provided that somebody else has recorded it and mapped it to Wiggle Wi-Fi first. Using the Wiggle Wi-Fi API, I was able to build the tool we just used in a couple of days. And that's with the help of the Wiggle Wi-Fi team because I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. So a big shout out to them for all of their assistance. If you want to check it out for yourself, you can download it, modify it, or use it in your own project on GitHub. And if you want to find more content like this, you can check out the Veronis blog and the Veronis Security Tools podcast to find out how we can keep your data secure.